What's going on everyone? It's Mr. West. I hope you're all well. So welcome to a special one-off video on the channel. And this time I'm exploring what makes a great smartphone video camera. Now most smartphones these days come with the ability to record video. Most at least up to 1080p or Full HD resolution. But there's a number of handsets out there which go up a level and are capable of recording some truly excellent video. Now I just want to preface this video by saying that I do not claim to be a professional cinematographer nor a professional or even amateur photographer. However, over the last 10 years or so, I have used enough smartphones to understand what makes a truly great smartphone video camera and what features are important to helping them be that way. Now we also want to say as well that this list isn't exhaustive and obviously you're free to chip in down in the comments your own personal opinion on what makes a great smartphone video camera. Okay, so one of the most important things for me that makes a great smartphone video camera is its stabilization. Now stabilization comes in a number of flavors. Um, by far the most popular and the one that's been around the longest is called optical image stabilization. Now in a nutshell, this means that your camera is mounted on a floating mechanism and moves on four or five axis uh, basically it counteracts your movements so for things like footsteps the camera will kind of float around in its lens and keep on the straight and narrow rather than moving with you as you make footsteps now as a comparison this is without any stabilization whatsoever and this is with optical image stabilization enabled now hopefully you can tell that it's a lot smoother and seems a lot more stable and hopefully the phone with the optical image stabilization enabled is helping to keep things nice and smooth. Now in the last four or five years or so, maybe a bit longer than that, phones have been using electronic image stabilization. Now I won't go into huge specifics during the video, but essentially what electronic image stabilization does is it crops in the image. So zooms in by around five to 10%, sometimes a little more than that. And then the information you cannot see around the edges of the image is then used by the phone and it calculates the movement of that information and then stabilizes it with software. It's a very impressive way of helping you keep your images nice and stable. And hopefully you can see compared to optical image stabilization, the image is even smoother doing it this way. Now very quickly before we move on, a selection of newer smartphones, there's Galaxy S10, the Note 10 range, the OnePlus 7 Pro, all have these new options called Super Stable Mode. And what that does is uses the ultra wide angle cameras, more on them later, and then crops in with that again and uses a very aggressive version of electronic image stabilization to get you truly super smooth video. It's great for fast moving action, for example, if you're on a bike or if you're out on a run, not that you take your smartphone with you on a run, but it is useful for those situations. So those are the stabilization methods. Personally, you should always look for a phone which has optical and electronic image stabilization because that will always make sure you get nice smooth video and the optical image stabilization will also help you with your photography. If you're trying to take a picture of a bee in your garden, you'll truly appreciate having optical image stabilization in that kind of scenario to get rid of blurry photos. Okay, so next on the list is frame rate. One of the things I look for in a smartphone video camera is its ability to record in multiple frame rates. So as standard, your smartphone should be able to record at 30 frames per second but many smartphones are now able to record, and have been for some years, 60 frames per second, and some even higher than that. Now being able to record in 60 frames per second does make a huge difference. Now this is currently in 30 frames per second, and this is at 60 frames per second. Now hopefully you should be able to tell that the movement is a lot smoother. So the phone is effectively capturing double the frame every second than 30 frames per second. It's especially useful if you're watching live action events 
or if there's lots of people moving around, it will just give you a much more realistic and lifelike sense of movement. But you should also look for your phone's ability to record in higher frame rates again. So 120, 240, or maybe even 960 frames per second. Now, while that may sound completely bananas, these are used for slow motion video. It just helps to capture a moment and slow it down to help you really appreciate it. You also get some really cool effects in the process as well. Now, the next item is color. <laughs> now, it's no good having a smartphone that can record really good quality video if the colors are really overblown or they're too muted. So the phones which I consider to be really great at color reproduction. You've got Samsung with their Galaxy range. And whilst I think the video with the Samsung Galaxy leans a little bit into the saturation side of things, it nonetheless produces really pleasing, true to life color. You've got LG with their G series handsets. Uh, they're considered to be some of the best for video recording. But what I consider to be probably the best for smartphone video is the iPhone. The iPhone video has been, well in common knowledge anyway, considered to be one of the best smartphones for video on the market. And that's because it, again, it's got really nice true to life color, excellent video stabilization. And it's also got really good things like fast autofocus. So it's ideal for just literally pressing the record button and you get nice true to life color, good stabilization, and everything is kept in focus. So the next on the list then, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the actual image quality, but it's to do with audio capture. Now your phone being able to record in stereo sound is a really good thing to have because it just makes your video so much more immersive and brings it to life. Especially if you're watching it back with headphones or if you're watching it back on your big TV at home with your home cinema or home theater with family around, it just brings that video to life with the stereo sound recording. You get a much better sense of localization, especially if you go to watch a racing event. It just helps to lift the experience of the video. Okay, so for the last part of the video, it's gonna be kind of a two in one because the first one is quite a brief thing. You can't make a whole segment out of it, but it's your phone's ability to focus on objects near and far and keep a lock on those. Now, with your smartphone, you can lock the focus just by tapping the screen and tapping the padlock. That then locks the exposure and the focus to keep everything in check. But some phones use multi-point focus techniques to help keep everything focused as you're moving around. Some phones are especially good at this. Again, the iPhone, I don't want to sound like a stuck record, but it has got exceptionally fast focus. The Samsung Galaxy range have really good focus as well. And they really do help keep everything nice and in focus, even if you start moving around. So you can see there, if I put my hand up, focus on the hand and then into the background. So, and if we move around and I do that, you can see the phone is getting a, a good lock on my hand, even if I'm moving around and jolting the camera and then it goes back to the background. So although autofocus is not something you can see when you're picking your smartphone, maybe in a store, if you're looking online, there's a number of videos online which will show you the way the autofocus works on your chosen smartphone. And it's especially important when you've got lots of moving objects, maybe in the foreground and the background, and your phone's ability to keep everything well focused across the image rather than what we call focus breathing, where the phone is having a hard time trying to find a point to focus on. You'll notice that the screen will breathe in and out where the focus is going foreground, background, foreground, background. Very irritating and it's not something you want when you're trying to capture that special moment with your smartphone. So, last but not least then, this is something which I consider to be really important now in what makes a great smartphone video camera these days, and that is its versatility and different lenses you can record on. Now, you'll probably have noticed in recent years that smartphones no longer have one lens. They have maybe two, three, or sometimes four lenses on the rear to capture video information and by far probably the best i've seen in years is the ultra wide angle camera 
So when recording video, the first lens is usually the, what they call the wide lens. And that is the one that you'll be using pretty much most of the time. Helps you to capture the best light and also helps with things like fast focus as well. But new smartphones now have ultra wide cameras and also telephoto cameras so you can see further into the distance. Now some phones like the iPhone have a two times telephoto lens, you can get two times closer. Whereas some like the Huawei and the Oppo phones have crazy 10 times hybrid zooms. You can get really far into the distance without even having to move from the spot. So if you look into the distance there, if we just look at this wind turbine just on the extreme left of the screen here, I can then push the wide angle camera and we can now see much more. So that is the wind turbine we've just been looking at. So you can, it's like as if we've stepped back a few steps so that haven't actually moved it's especially useful for very tight spaces or if you want to capture the spectacle of a concert maybe if you're in the front row uh, there's many many different uses for an ultra wide angle camera so using it this way allows you to get much more into the frame which is really really impressive now one thing to note is ultra wide angle lenses aren't very good in low light and also there's no autofocus on some cameras you can see there Everything is the same whether I put my hand in front or not. But that's not what they're for. They're for capturing an entire scene, not for intricate details up close. It's very, very impressive. So that's it then. That is the end of the video. And as I said at the start, it's by no means an exhaustive list of features. But these are the things that I consider to be really important to making a good smartphone even greater by having these features. And obviously all together, those things have to be combined with really good imaging software in order for the video to actually look good at the other end. It's pretty difficult now to make a smartphone that doesn't capture good video, but if you consider all of those, you get good stabilization, good color reproduction, good audio, the ability to switch different lenses, for example, ultra wide, telephoto, and your standard wide lens, and also autofocus. If you put all of those together, those are what I believe are the fundamental basics from taking what is a good smartphone video camera to a really great one. But you let me know what is your favorite and what you think makes a great smartphone video camera. Let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And don't forget, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing so there is more content coming on the channel very, very soon. But for now, this has been my look at what makes a great smartphone video camera. My name's Mr. West. And I'll catch you guys later.